goes to the basket. The old screen and roll, and then they're battling for one, the ball down inside. Gee. Iowa bench is claiming that the, I think it was Corver down there who had the ball, that he was out of bounds when he was touching the ball. And when you look at this Creighton program, they have a lot of NCAA experience. This is their third consecutive trip as the officials meet. Back in 1999, they, as a number 10 seed, they beat Louisville 62-58. That was Rodney Buford's season. So we, then they ended up losing to Maryland in the next round. Another look at the scramble. And one of the things that Steve Alford is saying is that the ball was out of bounds, and it wasn't. <laughs> The Creighton players were out of bounds and they were touching the ball. But they still ruled the held ball. So the possession arrow changes. Iowa 0 for 5 in the second half. Three turnovers. Now Henderson gets it. Duez Henderson. He hit a three in the second half, and that is the first field goal. Right, in the first half, he hit a three. That's the first field goal in the second half for Iowa. They're really struggling to find some offense. So far, Reggie Evans, a non-factor. And Walker. Corver dials it up. And rips it. Plus a foul inside. So Corver hits the three, and it's very interesting. Corver has not been a factor from beyond the three-point arc, but again, everybody stepped. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Welcome, everyone, to our studios here in New York. Singular at the Half, Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg. At halftime, George Mason with a three-point lead on Maryland, but that play by Juan Dixon at the end of the first half is the kind that can ignite a team. It certainly can. Georgia State knocked down a three to end their first half, came back to beat Wisconsin by one. Maryland seemed to be in a little bit of a hurry in the first half. If they just settle down, I think they'll be able to handle George Mason in the last 20 minutes. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, it's shaping up to be a bad day for the Big Ten. They've already lost twice. Iowa led by two at halftime, but they trail Creighton 45-34 in Uniondale. Let's take you there now. East Region Action. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 13.46 to go. Second half of play. Creighton shocking Iowa right now on top 45 to 37. And Iowa getting its points, particularly in the second half, from odd sort of places. Henderson now has two threes in the game. He came in with only eight on the season. Walker to Corver again. And the rebound goes to Worley. Now Oliver spinning, the runner can't stay down. Pyfram with the rebound. Oliver, I think, trying to do a little too much by himself. Pyfram now has five rebounds in the game, and Creighton rotates those three guys in the post. Pyfram is part of that three-headed monster in there, and the post players have really given Dana Altman's team a lift today. Corver popping out on the wing, knocked away. Worley saves it right into the hands of Corver. Boy, Corver throws it away again. Here come the Hawkeyes with numbers. Oliver down the lane, counted and the foul. Creighton is a team that likes to create the turnovers, but they just turned it over twice in a row, and Oliver just takes it all the way to the basket. Gus, it looks like he's decided that it's time to put this team on his shoulders and carry him. 12 points for Oliver. And the game summary. Jays 5 of 15 from downtown. Both teams have been good with the basketball, not turning it over. Of course, the purpose of pressure and the kind of pressure that Creighton exerts is not necessarily just to turn you over, but to get your offense going a little bit faster than you want to play. And they've certainly forced Iowa to do that today. So the Hawkeyes trying to dig up something of a rally have closed to within five of Creighton. It's 45 to 40. Meanwhile, in West Region action in San Diego, St. Joe's and Georgia Tech. That game is now a 46 to 39 lead for the Hawks. 13:46 to play in the second half. We will uh, take you back out to West to East Region action in Greensboro, North Carolina, for the second half of your game between Hofstra and UCLA. After this.
Singular at the Half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Goes after the rebound and draws the foul. Lindemann picks up the foul. The offensive rebounder on this team is supposed to be Reggie Evans, but Evans has struggled today, so Oliver's taken over. Oliver claiming he was shooting the ball. Anyway, anyway they get it back. And Oliver's a little greedy, Gus. I think he wanted points on the court. Partially blocked by Huss. Here's Smith. Steps back. Now Worley. Drop step to the hole. Count it. And the foul. With Reggie Evans on the bench. So the Iowa Hawkeyes begin to mount a strong comeback. They have now closed to within three of the Creighton Blue Jays, 45 to 42. Meanwhile, West Region action in San Diego. St. Joe's with a 48-39 lead on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Let's take you there live and join Dick Enberg and Bill Walton. Right now on the Hawks from St. Joe's. Here in San Diego, St. Joseph's leading 48-39, but Georgia Tech putting on a run in the second half. The Yellow Jackets were down by 17 at the intermission, have pulled within 48-41. Paul Hewitt never complains, never gripes about officiating calls that go against his squad, never gets down on his team, he's always so positive, so reinforcing. Nelson's pass intercepted by Alvin Jones of Georgia Tech. A long kick ahead pass by Aikens has been effective today. Aikens saying uh, to his big man Jones, you made a good play at the other end. Hurry up and help us back here. A lot of time on the shot clock. One of the few times we've had a chance to take our breath this afternoon. I don't think the shot clock has gotten under 15 the entire <laughs> game until this possession. Nice pass. And Alvin Jones able to flush it at 48-43. But Daryl LeBerry, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, transferred from Florida A&M, really starting to make things happen. I like the hair, too, for Daryl LeBerry. I didn't see it. Wish I had more hair. Nelson inside. And the big center, Sazanoff, unable to connect, but was fouled. The, the, the previous play for Georgia Tech. The high screen, and then Alvin Witt Jones slides in behind, over the top pass. The Yellow Jackets. But that's the good news. Back. Yeah, but that's the good news. The bad news is Alvin Jones has just picked up his fourth personal foul. The only big uh, man on that Georgia Tech squad, and uh, that fourth is a tough call for Paul Hewitt. St. Joseph with a 49-43 lead under 11 and a half to play in the second half. One other game in the East region. Greensboro at halftime. Hofstra with a 33-29 lead on UCLA. Here's UCLA's Dan Gadzurek. Watch the grab and the throw down. And the Bruins with a six-point lead early. And Hofstra ties it up at nine. Rick Apodaca from downtown. Watch the give and go here. Earl Watson, six out of six from the floor in the first half. Converts on the reverse there. Hofstra made seven of 14 threes from in the first half. There is Jason Hernandez with one of those seven, and they lead by four. There is your halftime score just underway now in the second half. And we will send you back to the second half of George Mason and Maryland in Boise after this. Singular at the half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Advancing, defeating Holy Cross, and Tayshawn Prince was the star. With the game tied at 58, after a timeout, he just went to work. He hit two threes, and that was the one that really wanted for him as Tubby Smith's team advances to the field of 32. Sound a lighter, drives the baseline. 15 to shoot. Boy, the runner. And a whistle and foul, Worley over the back. And right now, Dan, 
Creighton's having a hard time dealing with prosperity. They led by eight in the first half, ended up trailing by two at halftime. They've led by as many as 11 here in the second half, and now the lead cut to two. Gus, I think it's a, it's, the fact is not that they have started doing things poorly. It's just that Iowa really turns on the Jets every now and again, and Iowa really the aggressor right at the moment, led by Dean Oliver. They and really started attacking, particularly on the offensive end. Second foul on Worley. Make it third foul on Worley. Inside, Ben Walker. Now that's a guy who's six feet two, who's doing that spin move against a six eight guy on the inside. Maryland trailing George Mason. George Mason in Fairfax, Maryland in College Park. Now Oliver hangs in the air. 14 points for Dean Oliver. And more than his 14 points, his leadership in the second half, I think, has really been the key for the Iowa comeback that has him within two right at the moment. Sears kicks it out. Taylor squares up. Rebound, Piper who's tied up. Great to hold on. We talked about Dean Oliver and his ability to penetrate and how important that was. Here he beats the pressure and just takes it all the way to the basket. Pyfram doesn't get it, isn't able to get up and block the shot because he elects to go for the charge. Picked up by Barnes. And Springfield could have just, should have just stopped until you find your point guard. Watson for three. More energy now. Yeah, much more energy. Run. It caused all the defensive end. Let's send it over to Charles Davis. You know, I talked with Coach Steve Lavin at the half, and he told me two things have to happen. In order to change tempo, they need to get better on defense, and they need to make more shots on offense so they can get into their pressure. They're trying to do a better job of that in the second half. Another right there. Gittins got it. And here comes Jason Hernandez with Knight all over him. And outside it goes. Richardson for three. Come on! Patient unless your best shooters have a look. Four point off the lead inside. Going up for two is Billy Knight. Again, Jay Wright, though, does not want this to go back and forth, up and down. But if Richardson, Hernandez, Zapodaka have open looks for three, he doesn't mind that as a shot. 48% shooting for UCLA, 46% shooting for Hofstra. Another turnover for the Pride. Richardson turns it over. That story now has nine for UCLA and 15 turnovers for Jay Wright's Hofstra Pride. Five turnovers for Hofstra in the half. One of the things I'm sure Jay Wright talked about, can't turn it over. Danny Walker comes in for Hofstra. Capona. Springfield in front. We got Gittins on a UCLA player. Capono has it. Tosses up a gentle right hand here with the rebound pulled down by Roberto Gittins. He's got to get some help, though. Now, if they can break the press, got numbers on the other end. Smart move, though, by Springfield. Almost another turnover. Back court. And then five in the When UCLA turns up the pressure defensively, that has forced now this Hofstra team to play in a hurry, something they didn't do in the first half. Good hands Back again. Away and picked up by Barnes, diving for it, Hernandez. Shot clock to Danny Walker, and the shot clock is at three, and a UCLA foul on Watson. And that is his second of the game. The intensity has been turned up a notch as Hofstra, the 13th seed, leads UCLA. During the ACC tournament, Daryl LeBerry, the 6'3 senior from Decatur, Georgia. This guy came in against Virginia. Things were going tough against the Yellow Jackets. He hit a big three-pointer late that gave him the lead, gave him the momentum. He's carrying that over today in San Diego. He's the son of a coach. Uh, cuts the lead to five. His dad coaches the girls' basketball team and is the soccer coach at Stone Mountain High School outside uh, Atlanta. And uh, as you mentioned, the ACC performance when he averaged 11 a game, and he's got 12 today. You just see the confidence now that Georgia Tech is playing with. 
That's what the physical fitness level will do to you. It'll make you believe that you can do anything to make the opponent quit. St. Joseph's going cold. They just haven't found a man with a hot hand. O'Connor not afraid to fire down the bottom of the well with a three. Guard play once again, rescuing St. Joe's. Question for St. Joe's, are they playing too conservative here? In the opening moments, we just saw the blistering attack. Now with Georgia Tech's defense containing them a little bit, they still gotta be the aggressive, the ones, you know, the ones that assert themselves. Akins, not there, uh -huh. and Nelson leads a three-on-one break. Beautifully given up to O'Connor, who has 16 to lead all scores. Beautiful play, Nelson. Flawless execution on the break. Lewis. His three not there. The rebound, O'Connor, and he calls time before the travel. Timeout, St. Joseph's. O'Connor comes off the back screen after Nelson flares across the top. And then the same two combinations again. Terrific recovery by St. Joe's trying to reestablish control. Welcome back. Aztec Bowl, the former site of the <laughs> San Diego State football team, now here at Cox Arena, 12,000 plus, a sellout for four West Regional games today. The fastest selling tickets in the NCAA tournament this year, this year. I used to play flag football on this football field six feet below us right now. I used to dance the afternoons away on rock festivals here at Aztec Bowl. What a place this is. What uh, what position? Not at the rock festival, but in football. <laughs> oh, I, what were you? At uh, the tight end and a middle linebacker. You, a middle linebacker oh. at seven feet one? <laughs> it was in elementary school, but I was only six eight then. Inside and a foul is Alvin Jones playing with four fouls, trying to hook and is it Sazano? Yes, his third. Alvin Jones, such a critical part of this team. A team, Georgia Tech, that was not expected to have a good season. They changed coaches, they brought in Paul Hewitt. And with Paul Hewitt breathing life into the whole squad, a squad of five seniors, they have made it happen. He bounces at home. As we remind you, you can access live stats from every tournament game through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. And no one is more grateful for the job that Paul Hewitt has done than Alvin Jones at the line here. He called Hewitt the day they made it on Selection Sunday and said, thanks, Coach. And uh, Coach Hewitt says, thank you for the two. We're within seven. How about Utah State? Knocking off Ohio State. Stu Morrill and the Aggies getting it done. Long baseball pass. Knocked away. Get out of here. Price gives it up. Evans lost the handle. Back to Maryland. Another pass to Mouton. Now this is the pace that Maryland would try to Put in the second half. They're going to try to get up and down the floor. It's a great block by Heron, but Maryland just continues to come at him. It's Mouton. Not giving up, keeping control of the basketball. Shooting one. We're tied at 40. Maryland going to a little zone now to try to. Change the look. Go to the zone, try to control Evans inside. It would be a bit surprised as soon as Evans touches, he'll get double, triple teams. But Harris answers back with the three. Hitting 40% from behind the arc. Three year start. He's very active, very athletic. They needed a big bucket from Harris. Here. Nine points in this game. Back the other way. Watch out if Juan Dixon gets a stroke. So smooth coming off that down pick. He's now had double figures, James. 30 of 32 games this season. Remarkable. He's had two 30-point games, once against Wake Forest, the other against NC State. Evans 
They left it for him right on the numbers and up and good and up and in. Well, Maryland going to the zone, and when you're in the zone, there's always going to be a split second where an area or gap is open. Good touch pass by George Mason inside to Evans. Patriots by three. They want to work Baxter over there. Baxter. The last possession. Now watch the pick. For you young players, when you set the little pick, look at Blake going out and a good little spin move. When you set a pick, usually you're going to get open. Oh, nice inbounds pass. And up high was Wilcox to throw it down. 45-44, George Mason. Larinaga looking for cutters to Young up top. Price, they lob it low. Draws the double team. Hanging on that pivot foot. Tip in, wouldn't go. Young, rebound. Still has it. Foul. I tell you. Jesse Young has been the unsung hero here. Evans is having a great game, but Young has done a good job on Terrace Morris in the defensive end, and he's been extremely active on the boards. That was one of the first times I've ever seen Evans force a shot inside, but Young on the offensive glass, very active. 68% free throw shooter, makes it a three-point play. Young with 11, his season average just over eight. Young has been known to be too thin and a little soft, but he's everything changes in the NCAA tournament. I, I really believe that. There's no tomorrow. It's called pressure. 